All right. I haven't made a video in quite some time. I made a ton at once and backlogged it and uh, just uploaded them once a week. So we're going to talk about something different this time, bicycles. Uh, I love bikes. I've really been getting into it now. Uh, I've been riding bikes for a long time. I've been a bicycle commuter for a long time. And this is my current uh, commuter bike. And it is a 1988 Specialized Stump Jumper. Uh, really cool bike, you know, handmade frame in Japan, all steel. Uh, this particular bike had quite a few of these parts on it when I bought it, but I've done a lot of modifying, so I'll talk about that for a minute. Uh, I put a different stem higher, different bars, different grips. Uh, put this saddle on, this saddle's actually going to be coming off later today. It's an ISM PR 3.0. Great saddle. I have a different stump jumper I'm currently working on that I'm going to turn into a gravel pounder and this saddle is going to go on that bike. And I have an ISM Comfort saddle that I'm going to put on this one because this is my city commuter. Uh, I have, this is the factory stem for the seat as far as I can tell. Uh, Velo Orange bottle cages, those came on the bike. Velo Orange stainless steel fenders. It's a nice leather flap down here that's been added. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I'll give you some better looks at the bike here in a minute after I've been talking about it. Uh, again, the leather flap and the fenders came on the bike. It has Rhino light aluminum wheels, uh, rim brakes, just like as it was built. I believe the brakes that are on it are the factory uh, brakes. And of course I put the mountain compound, uh, the mountain dual compound cool stops on there. So it's got the black and the salmon on it. That really helps with squealing. Uh, it has a Sugino crank. I'm not sure if that came on the bike originally or not, but when I bought the bike, the Sugino crank was on it. Very nice made in Japan forged aluminum crank. Uh, I just replaced all three cogs on the crank. So it's a three by eight uh, drivetrain. I don't know what it was originally, but I changed the rear cassette and the rear derailleur and um, to get a higher uh, climbing ratio because I, I do a lot of steep hills. So uh, I have MKS pedals, very nice, Japanese made, uh, very comfortable. And this bike I set up because I, I uh, wanted a more upright posture. I'm not sitting upright. I'm sitting, you know, still leaning forward, but just more upright than I used to. And that helps with some disc problems I have in my neck and back. So. Uh, speed was not of the essence with this bike. I didn't care about weight. I didn't care about speed. I cared about comfort and longevity. And uh, the tires on this are Rene Airs. Uh, that's R-E-N-E, -E, Rene. And then Airs is how you'd say it in France, but it's H-E-R-S-E. -E. Uh, famous bike racer in the past. There's a company here in the Seattle area, uh, Rene Airs Bicycles and they make bicycles and bicycle components and famously tires. And their tires are often considered to be the best. They're, I believe they're made in the Panracer factory. Uh, Panracer, also excellent tires. But uh, these are the, I think they're the Notches Pass tire. And that would be a 1.8 inch wide smooth tire. Uh, excellent tire. I have, I've ridden it in rain. I've ridden it wet, and this bike is a pavement pounder. It's not a it's not a, a, a gravel grinder, so it's uh, you know it, I wouldn't know how these would perform on dirt or gravel, but they they do great in every condition I've encountered on concrete. And I am a year round bike rider. The only time I don't ride my bike is if there's frost on the ground or if it's under 40 degrees. Now, I will occasionally ride it if it's under 40 degrees, if there's not frost on the ground. But my rule with myself, uh, if I get up for work and it is under 40 degrees, I don't have to ride my bike. So if I don't feel like it, I won't do it. Now, if I feel like it, then I will do it. And most often, I do feel like it, but it's pretty miserable. Now, my commute's very short. It's just very steep downhill to work and uphill from. But this is a great all steel Japanese made frame. And uh, these old bikes, I mean, I just picked up, uh, uh, I don't know exactly the year, but it, let's just call it a 92. It's a very early 90s stump jumper, a little bit newer than this guy. 
and it is uh, I got it for 260 bucks complete and it's like I could just write it as I bought it it was dirty it just needs to be cleaned but of course I'm gonna modify it quite a bit uh, and we'll go over that either in a separate video or later in this one probably a separate one and um, I just bought that one yeah, $260 used and looking at the price of new bikes you know no thanks um, old school steel I love steel frames they're my favorite and uh, the old ones from the 80s and early 90s were mostly made in Japan very well by hand and uh, you know the, this one's not lugged there's no lugs at the joints and the same thing with the newer one you know those are those are cool the lugged bikes but uh, you know it's just tough to beat the quality for the price and the components that were used on stump jumpers in, in that era were generally very high quality so if you want to ride one out of the box with factory components like you have a great bike as far as that's concerned uh, I also have sun race friction shifters on both sides that I flipped this way because that's how I like to use them anyway let's take a look here uh, you know maybe it's better I'll turn it around so that you can see the drivetrain and I'll grab the camera off the stand and kind of show you some parts of the bike here and we can talk about why or how or what I haven't done. So here's a good look at the back wheel. These fenders from Velo Orange are fantastic. They block water better than anything I've ever seen. When I bought the bike, it had 2.3 inch Rene Ayers tires on it. And uh, they just didn't clear the fenders very well. And with these, the 1.8s, they... Uh, the fender comes out a little further than the, the tire. So it just blocks everything. And it really does a great job. Uh, this cassette has a 40 tooth uh, low gear, which is pretty nice. It's an eight speed cassette and it's the Shimano HG. I got that from Rivendell Cycles. I also got this Shimano Acera derailleur from Rivendell. You know, did all the, the, um, cabling and all that myself with Jaguar. These are the Japanese made MKS pedals. I got these outer parts from Rivendell as well. And I rode it for the most part with without this outer part. And I just put this on about a week ago and God, it's so nice. It really spreads weight out. I don't like wearing clipless shoes. I've done it in the past and I just hated it. It's not for me and I'm not a racer. So I just don't care about going fast or spinning fast means nothing to me so these are so comfortable i can wear them in my flip-flops i can i can wear any shoes i want to and they're super comfortable this way uh you know and since we were just on the topic of tires i'm going to talk about tubes for a second there's some pretty good tubes out there if you go on renee airs you can get the schwaldi tubes uh those are pretty good but i like the slime tubes because they're cheap they're on amazon and they're really durable and they're coated with that slime crap inside of them so if they get a puncture supposedly they can seal if it's a small enough puncture. So I've been using those and having great luck with them. So that's what's in there, tubes and tires. And that's a 26 inch Rhino light aluminum wheel. The wheel came with the bike. Uh, there's a good look at the Sugino logo on the crank set. That's an Origin 8 outer 42 tooth gear. I just put that on there. Uh, the, the second gear on, on the inside there is a 36. And then the smallest gear on the 74 millimeter section is a 30 and I have really good climbing ratios there. I can pretty much ride this bike on the 36 all the time and never mess with anything else. But, um, you know, I, I had a 48 outer gear on it before and it was, I just never used it. Like this bike, the way I've set it up ergonomically, it just doesn't go that fast. And so 48 tooth gear was so overkill. And with the 42, it's a lot more usable. And then you can see there, there's the factory Dior DX uh, front derailleur, just as it came from Specialized. And my new project bike has the exact same one, and it is a fantastic derailleur, and I will not be screwing with it at all, except for to remove it and clean it and put it back on. There's the two bottle cages, Velo Orange Stainless Steel, you know, came on the bike. They work just fine. Get your bottle cages from whoever you want. I'm just using what I had. Seat stem, there's the ISM PR 3.0 saddle. Great saddle. Uh, 
It's my favorite I've ever owned. It has Tektro brake levers. I'm about to replace these because these levers have no adjustment. And for the front brake, that's not a problem because if you look at the front brake cable here, I actually have adjustment, fine adjustment here uh, on, the, on the stem, on the steering stem, and that's fine. But uh, I have none on the brake. And if you'll notice, these 88s have this funky brake, and that's where the rear brake is, right there, down there by the, by the crank. So there's no way for me to fine tune the adjustment. And when the wheels are almost never perfectly um, round, you know, like they're almost always a little crooked. Uh, I'm a big, heavy guy too, so that just makes it worse. And so the fine adjustment is really necessary for me to get those brakes dialed in perfect. And uh, so there's a good look at the leather flap behind that fender. Very nice. We have a nice Velo Orange stainless steel front rack. I had originally considered adding a rack, but it's just not, uh, just not necessary, really. <sighs> adding a rack to the rear, so I like having everything up front. I can see it, keep an eye on it, and um, it helps distribute weight better. Since I sit more upright, more of my weight's on the rear, so having my 20 20 to 30 pounds of stuff I carry to work with me up front really helps with those hill climbs. You can see there's just a standard Dior hub, nothing special. Uh, they work just fine. Factory fork, rigid steel. Uh, I got these bars from Rivendell. I don't remember what they were called. And I also got this stem from Rivendell and I don't remember what it was called. And I just checked their website. They don't have this stem anymore. Nice stem, though, and it's got four bolts up front. Uh, and it's a steel stem, not aluminum. So you can just unbolt it here and change your bars out. So you don't have to do the weird thing where you pull all your stuff off and have to slide the bar out like a lot of quilt stem bikes are. So, yeah, that's how it's set up. Uh, I got an ISM Comfort Saddle coming today in the mail. that will go on here, and then this one will go on the new Project Bike. Uh, when I get done with that. So that's the commuter. And one of the things I really like about this is, oh yeah, let's show you the Sunray shifters too. There's the Sunray shifters. These are widely considered to be, if not the best among the best friction shifters of all time. And they have a nice little ratchet in there. They're not indexed, but they ratchet just because, and it's kind of cool. These are Ergon cork grips. Up here's a Phoenix BC30 headlight. That's just a bike shop taillight. I think it's like Lazine, something like that. Works fine. Yeah. Yeah, and that's how I ride it. So very comfortable. Uh, I can ride on it all day long. No problem. Really enjoy it. Um, I get a decent amount of attention from bike people, but people who aren't bike people that are just looking to, like, steal a bike don't pay much attention to it because it's, you know, the paint's not perfect and it's not new and it's just kind of an old dorky looking bike. So those folks just aren't, aren't interested. And that's what I like about it is that it kind of flies under the radar, even though it's actually a really nice bike with a lot of nice parts on it. So I don't really like to leave my bikes locked up uh, much anyway. Yeah. And then I'll give you a look at the brake pads. They're the mountain compound from Cool Stop, uh, it's a good, good break. You get the best of both worlds. Your first point of contact is the, the black friction material, which is less prone to squealing. And then your second point of contact is the salmon friction material, which is uh, more powerful. So you kind of get the best of both worlds that way. Although there's all kinds of other great Cool Stop brake pads you can use. Yeah, anyway, thanks for watching.